Since the beta and leading up to the launch, we kept hearing about how well Destiny 2 runs on PC. Now we have the full release of the game and we've been playing plenty of it. We're gonna provide some benchmark numbers and give you tips on how to boost your frame rate. First, let's run through some of the important graphic settings in the options menu. We talked about these in previous videos, but it's key to bring them up here again. Field of view or FOV will widen your viewing angle, allowing you to see more in your peripheral vision. We recommend going with the max at 105, as we did with all our tests. This does affect frame rate since more of the game world is being rendered on screen. We have two anti-aliasing options. FXAA tends to make the overall image a little blurry, and is less effective in getting rid of jaggies as opposed to SMAA which does a better job, but taxes your machine a bit more. In addition, render resolution or super sampling provides the cleanest overall image, but it'll significantly impact performance when set to high percentages. You should only use this if you have plenty of FPS to spare. Texture anisotropy or anisotropic filtering makes textures and surfaces seen at an angle and at a distance more detailed. It hardly impacts frame rate, so we recommend setting this to 16 times. Ambient occlusion darkens areas that should be blocked from light sources to add a richer look to the game. HDAO does a fine job of adding depth to the image in exchange for a few FPS. While 3D takes this a step further, it'll cost additional FPS. Texture quality should be set to the highest since it won't impact performance as long as you have enough video memory on your graphics card. The menu also shows a bar to see how much VRAM is being consumed, so you'll know. Shadow quality affects the resolution at which shadows from the sun and spotlights are rendered. This will noticeably affect frame rate the higher it's set. While foliage shadow distance doesn't affect performance all that much, foliage detail distance is a big ticket item if you need higher frame rates. Wind impulse is a neat effect that makes foliage realistically react to the action in game and it doesn't really impact FPS. Light shafts affects the quality of ray casting through the environment, but doesn't ask much of your system if it's turned up. Destiny 2 doesn't allow you to use third-party performance monitoring applications, which means we couldn't use fraps to read our frame rates. An in-game benchmark tool is also absent, though we do get a built-in FPS counter. By going off of that, we were able to track FPS at any given moment during a sequence we repeated to get our results. We went to Earth's European Dead Zone, or EDZ, but got away from the Trostland Church outpost to make sure we had a controlled environment. We walked down the path to the outskirts where the scenery opens up and tests a PC's ability to render Destiny 2's vast environments. Then we got in a quick firefight with some dregs to capture some action, and we monitored the frame rate throughout the sequence. The system we used had an Intel Core i7-6700K CPU at 4.2GHz and 16GB of RAM. We tested Destiny 2 with three resolutions using the latest video cards from NVIDIA and AMD that best fit each resolution. Let's start with our 4K tests. It was ideal to do 4K with everything maxed out on one card, the GTX 1080 Ti. And based on our test sequence, the card produced 51 to 60 FPS. For a more reasonable 4K scenario, we tweaked the settings and used HDAO, high shadows, and no anti-aliasing. We saw a noticeable boost as the GTX 1080 Ti gave 70 to 96 FPS. The GTX 1080 was able to get between 58 and 79 FPS. And AMD's RX Vega 64 gave us 54 to 73 FPS. Moving on to the 2560 by 1440 resolution. Here we pitted the GTX 1070 and RX Vega 56 against each other. With every setting maxed out, the 1070 produced between 60 and 88 FPS, while the Vega 56 got 54 to 77 FPS. Bringing things down a bit by using HDAO and high shadows, the GTX 1070 improved to 69 to 95 FPS, and the Vega 56 bumped up to 61 to 87 FPS. I know we've been throwing around a lot of numbers, but hang in there, we're almost done. For our 1080p max test, we matched the GTX 1060 and RX 580. They're pretty much neck and neck. Nvidia's card gave us 65 to 92 FPS, and AMD's card put out 64 to 89 FPS. By turning the settings down to high and using HDAO, we can get great frame rates on budget level cards. We threw in the GTX 1060 again and got between 76 and 101 FPS. But the cheaper RX 570 yielded 63 to 90 FPS, and the even cheaper GTX 1050 Ti netted 50 to 72 FPS. By doing tests on both highest and high settings, we see how much of a boost in FPS there is. However, there are four important options to turn down when looking for better frame rates. Ambient occlusion, shadow quality, foliage detail distance, and depth of field. Taking these down a notch contributed significantly to getting better performance in our tests, so look to these settings if your system is struggling. Turning FOV down from 105 to 95 also gives a boost to FPS, but test this out to see if the narrower viewing angle is a worthy trade-off to you. Every other graphics option is pretty much icing on the cake. 
It's exciting to have Destiny 2 on PC, especially since it runs and plays like a true PC game. We hope you learned something about graphic settings here, or at least got some context as to how the game performs with some of the latest video cards at the appropriate settings. Be sure to check out our wealth of guides and walkthroughs for the game on GameSpot.com if you're just getting started. And read or watch our full review of Destiny 2 if you're still deciding on whether or not to jump in. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.